Let's bring in our panel, former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and Byron York, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner. So we get word tonight that the DOJ, Ari, uh, says that they are going to appeal if the CDC says the mask mandate is necessary. Some circles say the CDC is going to say that it's necessary. But the bottom line is that the Biden administration didn't take the victory lap when this judge, a federal judge who clerked for Clarence Thomas, uh, gave them the federal ruling. Yeah, the president said it's up to individuals as opposed to saying it's a bad ruling and we'll appeal it. Um, look, I think it's fair to say that the Department of Justice is masking what it's doing. Uh, they're in a very uncomfortable position. <laughs> Nobody wants to take this political hot potato. And you know why? Because everybody in America is sick and tired of wearing masks and everybody knows it. This should have been ended on airplanes, trains, train stations, airports months ago. There is no good health reason. And the statistics, Brett, show that in the states that did not have mask mandates, their incidences of getting COVID are identical, almost identical to the states that did have mask mandates. Same for death rates. Masks make no difference. This is silliness. It should end. It should have ended months ago. All right. Here's some more on the travel mask ruling. Take it. Uh, Jan Crawford, legal correspondent for CBS. What's crazy is Biden got bailed out by a Trump judge who clerked for Thomas. He can now end an unpopular mask mandate without taking responsibility or alienating allies. If the White House was so um, irate about the ruling, it could have immediately said it's asking California 11 for a stay. It didn't. Uh, Leslie, we're kind of in this no man's land here. Yes, and, and look, we, we were weeks away from uh, this possibly ha happening on, from the White House. We're almost in the month of May, and that's uh, originally what the deadline was. My concern is what we just um, heard uh, are the vulnerable, whether it's a four-year-old cancer patient or an 85-year-old who may not even know they have an underlying condition simply because they're 85. Yes, it's wonderful to have the choice. I'm going to be starting to get on planes again, and I'm certainly going to mask up. I think somebody said earlier on Twitter today, you know, they could say seatbelts are voluntary, but I'm still going to wear one. And if we don't think masks help at all, then we should tell our surgeons in the OR to rip them off before they cut us open. Yeah, and it's going to be your choice as part as opposed to a government agency uh, telling that you have to do it um, to the president's point today. The president today, Byron, uh, this is how uh, the Boston Globe writes this. There is only one reason why Biden is visiting New Hampshire today. Bear in mind that a primary challenger need not win the nomination to have a major impact. Every time an incumbent president has faced a significant primary challenge going back to 1968, they have not been reelected. While he may be there to talk about infrastructure, not campaign politics, it will serve as a planting of the flag and warning to any potential challengers the president is at least looking at reelection. Election and word that he told Barack Obama that he is running for re-election, even among these tough poll numbers, Byron. Well, and there's there's word that Democrats, some Democrats, are getting the idea that he's just too old to be president, and this is not going to get better uh, going up to the midterms. Uh, political scientists have looked at presidents going back 60 years, and their their job approval ratings never ever went up appreciably between now and the midterm year and the elections uh, in a midterm year. And we haven't talked about it yet, but there's an explosion of illegal immigration about to happen uh, on the on the U.S.-Mexico border. These things are going to get worse for Biden at a time when potential challengers are thinking about what to do. Last thing quickly, Ari, this uh, conversation we had with Sean Penn and Robert O'Brien, two sides of the political spectrum, but united on Ukraine. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it fascinating to see people take a risk, an actor actually no issues, and take a risk with his life to go learn these issues and stand for Ukraine? And it's inspiring. It's what Zelensky has inspired in all, all people around the world. It's good to see a Hollywood actor stand up and do that. Okay. Panel, thanks so much.